Okay, I have two. What I have done here is I've applied a base layer of white paint. This is white acrylic paint mixed with water, thinned with water. You don't want it to be too thin because then your paint won't hold its shape. So it's got to be the same consistency as the rest of the paint, which is just a little bit thicker than warm honey. So that's put over the whole um, canvas, all over, the, all over the canvases. Now what I'm doing at the bottom here is I'm pouring my colours. The idea with this painting was that I was going to do sort of summer into autumn, winter. So on the far side, there are the blues and the greens, and then it comes into the reds and the pinks, and sort of in the, the middle canvas is a blend of the two. The colored paints are mixed with pouring medium with a one-to-one -one, one ratio, and then it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I say a one-to-one -one ratio. It doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one ratio. You can use more pouring medium than paint, but I'm just giving it as a basic recipe. Mix that all together, then you, add, you, you thin the paint down with water, which is going to be the same consistency as your base paint. You don't want it too thick, because then it won't move and it won't give you lacing. And you don't want it too thin, because if it's too thin, it's just going to run all over the canvas. So what I'm going to do now is with that palette knife or spatula or whatever you want to call it, I'm pulling up. So what you're doing here is you're just skimming the surface of the white paint. You want to hold that palette knife flat. The minute you turn that palette knife or that spatula, it digs into the paint and it takes away the paint, the white background paint, so you don't get this beautiful lacing. So you have to keep that flat and you just very lightly skim the surface of the paint. Every now and then just give it a wipe down, which I didn't really do, which I should have done. You can't see the lacing here. You'll see it later on in the video. All right, go backwards and forwards. I also like to change, vary the, the angle. So instead of just going straight up like that, I will then turn the palette knife and bring it up or down. Like you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just changing the, the um, shape of the, of the stroke a little bit. Yeah, I'm wiping it off now. Okay, here you can start seeing the lacing. Look how beautifully those colors go into each other. So instead of making a muddy color, they actually are still separate which is quite surprising because there are some very complementary colors there. You've got blues and oranges and greens and reds. So. What I'm doing here is I'm just adding some paint up at the top. I did do it on the previous canvases, but I don't think it, I showed it. Just purely because I want to be able to bring some stuff, some paint down. So it's not all just going up, it's also coming down. And these are very, they actually came out beautifully on the end, in the end painting. You can also use different size palette knives. So it doesn't have to be the same size and not the same palette knife. I think I was a little bit shy. I had um, people watching me, so I felt a little bit under pressure. And instead of being able to just take my time. I felt like I had to rush it a little bit. You can see the lacing a bit. Look at those beautiful yellows and the oranges coming out from the top there.
Right here you can see, look at those beautiful colors and the lacing, how beautifully that's worked. Look at those cells at the bottom there. The colors have really, honestly, I didn't think that a lot of these colors would work as well as they did. So here I'm just using a heat gun. I want to just um, bring out and just break up some of that solid color at the bottom, which it wasn't really necessary because I did go back in with the balloon after this. But it was nice there for the lacing because I didn't want to lose all of that lacing. So look how beautifully delicate that lacing is up at the top there. What I did forget to do was put gold in here, which I'm very upset about, quite disappointed in, because I, used, I do love that gold. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, she's just giving you a little bit of a look at the painting. There's some torching again. When you torch, you can see these little holes. I call them like, well, they're called cells that are coming through the base, the thick paint. There we go. You can see them there. So that's what the torching does. It breaks up the top layer of the paint to allow stuff to come through, to allow the bottom to come through. All right, this is just to give you a closer up of the cells and the lacing and how those colors have worked and how they've colored the bottom layers of colors have come through the top. When you start your color, when you start putting it on the bottom of your canvas, on your canvas, just think whatever's underneath is going to be what kind of shows the most. All right here I'm going with the balloon. I have to point out that I didn't wipe the balloon as often as I should have. Okay, you can still see there's a lot of paint on that balloon. Also, if you want your cells or your shapes, the effects that are created from the balloon that by ballooning, to be more defined, you can also wait for it to dry a little bit, but don't wait too long. If you wait too long, then you will get texture on your paint because as you drop up and lift up and your paint is dry, it leaves that shape in the paint. It leaves it behind. I also like to, what you can see here, when I lift up the, the balloon, I quite like to give it a little bit of a flick to create little effects, secondary effects, so it doesn't all just look the same. I should have, I should have um, cleaned that balloon a bit more. You can see there what I'm talking about with the flick. I actually do love the balloon to technique. It just gives you so much texture, and I don't mean texture and texture of here I'm going two hands. Now you can see how defined those shapes are. I'm actually trying to get um, a flower shape. When I talk about texture, I mean texture of the paint. I don't mean the texture of the coarseness of the paint. I'm talking about the effects. If you do wipe your balloon, don't wipe it with the damp cloth. I just use a piece of newspaper or paper towel, roller towel, or um, a towel. You can see there where I'm going down with two hands and just smashing down and lifting straight up again. You can see the different shapes that you get. And there I'm doing a flicking motion. Okay, so here is the painting. It's just, I've just finished it. What I did do was a little bit, oh, you can see I've added some glitter in there. I just, I absolutely love glitter. I know it's not a fine art thing, but it's just it's something that I just love. So what I did was I allowed the paint to dry a little bit and then went back in again, just to get more definition. You can see all those, look at those beautiful shapes there. 
And that lacing is absolutely lovely. So what I've done is put a sprinkling of crystal glitter. You can see it on the background on the left there. And then where there's very bright colors, I've gone and actually put a very fine um, metallic dust on those, but just on the same colors on the same paint. Look at those beautiful colors. This first panel was sold, unfortunately. You can see the glitter there that I'm talking about, the crystal glitter. Well, I don't say unfortunately the painting was sold. It's always lovely to sell. But I didn't get a video of it. You can see that glitter shine coming through there. I didn't get a video of it to show you what it looked like after I had worked into it. And then here's the last two panels. And just to show you what I've done is I've taken all those effects that have been created by the balloon and created something more out of that. So you can see I've used um, a pen and just pulled out bits of it and created flowers and birds and whatever you see in there. There's a bird there on the left. Whatever you see in there, you just pull out. It gives it a nice, almost solidifies and anchors the painting to the canvas. Well, I hope this is helpful. I hope you all enjoyed this. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. There's been a lot of interest in this painting, so I just thought I would help you or show you how it was created. Look at those beautiful colours.